everyone and welcome back to your new show called Complete Feng Shui. Now before I get on with the show, just a reminder, if you're listening live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch or Twitter, Payo is ready and waiting to take your comments, questions and provide you with links to anything that we talk about in the show today. If you're watching this via replay on Binge Networks USA, Hero Go TV USA, or on the Tony TV channel app available on Roku, LG, and Samsung smart TVs across the planet, you will find links to all the information that we speak about today in the description associated with this show. Now, we've been doing a little regular acknowledgement to country, which is a movement globally that acknowledges the special and important role indigenous communities play in the development of our country's cultural identity. So I want to respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to the elders past and present and all the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening here today. Now, I love this part of the week when I get to talk to Master Feng Shui and Chinese astrology expert, uh, I was going to say Dr. Michelle Castle, but it's Michelle. <laughs> She's done enough metaphysical studies to actually almost reach doctorate level, but she's uh, not quite there yet. So Michelle is um, was a mum of three when she started to develop an interest in this obscure field, which is unusual for a Western woman to have such a defined and beautiful interest. And her journey began about 20 years ago when Feng Shui tipped her interest and rapidly gained momentum and interest in the West. Like many, she'd read about the subject, friends had their homes healed, and her curiosity flourished. A Feng Shui consultant came to Michelle's home and instructed her on colours, furniture placement, and assortment of symbolism. Red needed to be removed from a wall, furniture directions needed realignment, jade and kumquat plants were placed at doors, mirrors and pictures rehomed, salt went into certain spots, and crystals hung to redirect energy. And the list went on. And this started a lifelong journey for Michelle and she found an exciting new venture and started her upskilling into feng shui and Chinese astrology and that was over 20 years ago and now she is a feng shui master herself and has a deep understanding of this multi-layered science of practice. She's taught feng shui, Chinese astrology and metaphysical studies for the Silk Road Asian Studies at Curtin University and has worked extensively on interiors, renovations and emerging businesses and established premises. Through many years of practicing and consulting, Michelle has also become an author and a public speaker and brings her wealth of knowledge and experience to this new Feng Shui series. Welcome back to the show, Michelle. It's delightful to have you here again. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we get to have this session every week. And just a reminder for the audience, if there's something in particular you want to ask, please let Michelle know on michelle at completefengshui.com or drop me an email, info at tonylontis.com, and we will endeavor to answer your questions around feng shui and Chinese astrology. So this week, we want to talk about your first book, the one that started it all, because you wrote the book from the perspective that you wished you'd known these things when you started out on your journey. So Michelle, let's talk about the book. What's it's called? What's in it? Why we should buy it and where we can get it? 
Okay, well, it's actually called Beginners Feng Shui. So it, it's starting right at the Good. start um, because it, it is all the things that I wish that I actually knew when, when I started mm. my Feng Shui journey. Um, as I mentioned um, in the last episode, um, I actually had my house Feng Shui. That's what piqued my interest in the first place. And mm. the fact that I was told I couldn't have a red wall and I needed to put salt somewhere and I needed to hang a crystal and crazy. So many people say you need to hang a mirror above the toilet or above the door leading into your laundry or toilets so so much of this superstition actually confused me and I really yes. wanted to understand why 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 I needed to hang a mirror above the door of my toilet before I entered um, particularly that that seemed quite obscure to me so yes. I realized that with consulting and with dealing with people over time that so much of feng shui is actually shrouded in symbolization so it mm. is um there's a lot of tips and there's a lot of symbolization and there's a lot of confused information out there so I just wanted to make it really simple so so mm. people could pick it up and I kind of thought well I have all this knowledge I I, I just want to be able to help people enable themselves and to share my knowledge so beginners feng shui actually started that way and I actually started writing beginners feng shui back in 2014 so wow. um but I'm a little bit of a perfectionist I do like things yes. to be right and correct so beginners feng shui has actually had about three revamps I <laughs> I I, I <laughs> I've, wrote, I've, I've changed the pictures um, in Beginner's Feng Shui about three times in, until I was happy with it and mm. until I felt that it was simple enough for anybody that didn't know anything about Feng Shui. So if you really truly are a, a beginner, this was an easy book to actually pick up and to read and to be able to work your way through within your home without it getting too confusing for you. Yeah. So Michelle, when you spoke about the um, mirror on the above the door or, or, that you enter to go to the toilet, that to me sounds a little obscure, but I know it must be correct because it's coming from you, number one. But can you just, that simple little um, uh, thing to do, can you explain why it's so important? And then I want to reflect on your original feng shui consultation and how it impacted your life once you listened and implemented those suggestions? Well, the having a mirror above the laundry or the toilet door to me sounded really, really crazy. Um, yeah. I, I, I just didn't quite understand the symbolization of it. And I know there's a lot of masters and there's a lot of people all the way around the world that do have these tiny little bagua mirrors um, above ah, their laundry. That was door. my next and question. Yeah. So it usually sits, it's not exactly sitting above the toilet, um, it's sitting uh, above the laundry or the toilet door on the outside before you enter those rooms. And mm -hmm. the reason um, why is back in the day, traditionally toilets were actually, and bathrooms were out areas. They weren't actually yeah. within the home because after mm -hmm. all, it, it is the area that we get rid of waste. So, yes. Um, yes. and yet in this day and age, we make our bathrooms and toilets so extremely glamorous and luxury. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it, it wasn't like that in the first place. It, it was actually an area where waste was removed from the body and was removed from the home. Yeah. So I think the mirror initially came about to actually stop good energy leaving the home. So because a mirror um, does the job of it attracts whatever it sees. So a mirror's job is actually to draw in the energy that it sees. Um, so that would mean by placing the mirror above your laundry or above your toilet door, that the energy was actually drawn into the mirror, which meant it was kept within the home and your oh. good energy and chi as such wasn't going down the drain. Now, drains is actually a really interesting point as well, because yeah. I remember going to one client's house and she was so convinced that she knew so much about feng shui that she'd actually put masking tape over the drains in, in her laundry and bathroom so that oh. no, no positive energy could, in fact, escape the house at all. And um, that to me, that was really quite interesting an interesting point of view if nothing else but it, it's also a dangerous point of view and obviously in our country our drains aren't allowed to be covered so um, it, it's interesting the extreme that people will actually go to to follow um, the symbolization in feng shui which and a lot of it is old wives tales it, it, it started at a time and our times are really quite different now yeah. so I, I'm not a big believer in the fact that you need a mirror above your laundry or that was my next door. question <laughs> no I, 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 I 
No, I, I, I don't actually. I have a lot of mirrors actually within my home, but obviously mm. they're placed correctly. So no small bagua mirrors above any laundry or toilet door or bathroom door actually in my home. Okay, it, it, okay. It, it's not a symbolization that I prescribe to. Good, good observation. So your first book, Beginner's Guide to Feng Shui, um, is available where? Where can the people listen um, to it? It's actually available all the way around the world. It's um, yes. on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. So it's on multiple sites at the moment. Um, good. It's actually, it's very exciting being an author. And um, it was very surprising to me how, how, how many countries and how far around the world, <laughs> once once you write a book, you could actually connect with people, which is very, very exciting. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Absolutely Amazing. Um, so we've been talking this week, uh, Michelle and I, um, we talked to, um, about the book, but there's some more exciting things happening in your complete feng shui world. And one of those is the 365 Everyday Feng Shui Tips Journal. Tell me about how this idea came about, where it's at, and how people can get it, what's, what it's for, how you use it. Okay, so when I finished the Beginner's Feng Shui, um, I was really excited. Obviously, I launched it and it was received very well. Um, but then I realised that from a Facebook point of view or from a post point of view, often people liked small increments of um information, information. Of actually having to read a whole book so I was finding I was going to clients homes and they had actually purchased my book they had read my book and they had followed it by the tea which mm. initially is quite an overwhelm for people to read a book and then feel that they have to actually act on everything within the book so uh -huh. I looked at it and thought there's actually got to be a simpler way how, how, how can I simplify this information and how, how can I actually give more information and how can I help people understand the flow within their home and to mm. actually tap into the goals that they actually want so feng shui is actually very goal and action orientated so it's yeah. important to understand what your goal is what, what what you're actually practicing feng shui for is it that you would like to increase wealth or you need better health or you'd like to pull in a better relationship or you'd like to improve the relationships that you actually have so mm. the same there's so many tips out there and there's so much symbolization out there and mm. I thought, okay, I'll do a tips book. And then I was talking to another a client and mm. she was talking about a journal. And all of a sudden it was like a penny drop moment. I thought that would be perfect if, if I yes. actually created a tips journal. So the book actually starts with you looking, actually looking at your home, understanding your home, walking through your home and viewing it and, mm. and noticing the first thing that you see on waking and the last thing that you see as you're leaving your home and also understanding how you feel about your home. So you're, you're actually looking at your home from a feng shui point of view. And then the tips are a daily tip and it's also daily journaling so there's yes. very a few to journal every day and there's a tip every day so it makes it really quite simple for people to digest I suppose and to mm. act upon because they're not overwhelmed by pages and paragraphs of information yeah. they simply just have to sit with the one tip for that day and look at it and go is this something that I can actually action so mm. I always believe with feng shui that you don't sweat the big stuff if, if there's yes. something that you can't action and there's something that you truly truly can't do because in a lot of instances in a lot of homes there's things that people can't do they simply yeah, can't change they can't, the wall, change they can't the knock down a wall orientation they might not even be able to move home so they have That's to be right. able to tap into something that works for them right there and then so that's why I really love my tips journal because I I, I think yes. it's, it's a really simple easy approach and obviously you can rush through it if you want to but I think you actually get a lot more out of it by but by, by simply doing one tip a day day and actually reflecting on it and thinking about what your goals are and what action needs to be taken to actually reach those goals. So Michelle, going back to your first experience with having your the consultation around your home, um, I'm assuming that you couldn't implement everything that the consultant wanted you to do, um, but I'm wondering how that affected your life once you'd had that consult consultation and once you'd, because that's what you do for people now, you go into their homes, their businesses, their companies and give them a, a feng shui con consultation. How does that impact 
lives and business? What are some of the results from your personal perspective first and then from some of your clients? What happens around their lives? Well, once I'd had the consultation and then once I had a little bit more understanding of why I was actually taking things into consideration and and Uh acting on them. So one of the first things that um, was taken into consideration within the home was the um, movement of mirrors and mirrors is um, a mirror's job is actually the job of a mirror is actually to draw in the energy that it sees so and I didn't understand that at the time and a lot of people don't understand that mirror most people understand and have known the story of oh you shouldn't put a mirror in front of your front door Um, so um, that's something that often needs to be corrected in a home because um, people will place a mirror right in line of their front door and Mm -hmm. so moving mirrors was probably the first step that I took because that was an e- that was easy that was something that I could do without my husband um, <laughs> I, I, yes. I could move some mirrors I'm um, moving furniture around um, that I needed a little bit more assistance with but mm. I actually found by shifting the mirrors within the home I was able to tap into more favorable luck within the home so I didn't understand which luck I was actually needing to tap into prior mm. to feng shui consultation Also the bed placement, so the placement of um, the direction of the bed, which is often the head of your bed, like where where, where your head is. Um, I can vouch for this one. Yeah, people get very confused about a facing direction of the bed because we automatically assume that our facing direction is the same as when we're sitting or standing. So it's actually the direction of our eyes and the direction of our shoulder. So when we're laying down, though, within our bed, it's actually Mm. the opposite because in a bed, your facing direction is the tip of your head. Now, somebody asked me that the other day and they said, "Why, why is that? And all of a sudden it came to me that... I felt it must be something to do with the alignment, the same as the chakras. Because if you really oh, think about it, yes, if you yes, do yes, any yes. healing um, and um, in anything natural or alternate, they always talk about the the energy entering from your crown chakra. So to me, the, the bed direction is really no different because when you're sleeping, the energy is obviously still entering from your crown chakra. Mm. So it then comes down to the magnetic pull of the water content in your body. Um, that's what a favourable or an unfavourable qua or eight mansions um, direction direction actually simply relates to is your body in flow now if your body yes. is in flow you you sleep so much better you have much better yes. concentration which means you have increased wealth you have increased productivity you have yes. increased study ability so a favorable bed direction is one of the first things that people should always look into within their home mm. um, is getting the best choir direction for them because my children actually went from sleeping and waking, waking me half the night to actually uh-huh. sleeping all night. So, so, so that was amazing. I, I was hooked. Feng Shui worked. Like my children were yes. sleeping and, and they hadn't actually slept for probably three or four years. My children were quite small yes. at this point in time. So to me, that was absolutely magic that I'd gone from having regular broken sleep with a mm-hmm. child waking me every two or three hours to mm-hmm. all of a sudden being able to put my children to bed and to have them them sleep in their own bed for the whole night and so that was very very powerful that was quite that was kind of very powerful and that got me hooked before I actually took anything else into consideration and I have to say audience that um Michelle um helped me with a sleep issue um back in December um and I just said to her I'm just I'm not sleeping properly and she actually got me to change the direction of our bed which doesn't suit what the um room was originally set up for but I don't care I've actually not uh, had very much interrupted sleep at all since I changed the direction of the bed. Does it make the room tricky to get in and out of? Well, yeah, a little bit, but I don't care because I've never slept as well as I sleep now. And that was just changing the bed one direction to another direction so I actually that was my that's my first experience with feng shui and it's a very positive one and it was simple to fix there's no big deal who cares where you know just shift your bed and have better sleep 
end of story. It was great. It, and and it's, it's not just actually sleeping. Um, people, children and adults these days do an awful lot of gaming. Um, yeah. We're spending a lot of time working from home over the last yes. year or two due to world circumstances where we're actually faced that we're having to spend a lot more time at our computers and actually at home. And I find when I go into businesses, it's um, mm. the quiet direction is one of the first things that I look at for the staff. Because yeah. if you've got staff that's spending seven to eight hours a day working for you, and they're actually working in an unfavorable direction, you're not getting that's productivity not out of them. They're continuously getting up, um, they're talking, they're gossiping, mm. they're getting a drink. Where if you're actually in flow and you're facing your most favorable direction, then mm. you're going to get the most productivity and the same with school and it was really yes. interesting because I noticed it um, very early in the day um, that my children and at school so as they were going through school the the directions actually started flipping so I, I, I noticed from one year to the next with my children at school that, that one year we kind of said oh that teacher's really good with boys but she doesn't actually have any control with girls and oh. I actually looked at the choir directions and realized that generally um, because your choir direction is actually taken from your year of birth so it's only yes. from your year of birth it is it is a, a stagnant form of feng shui so it's non-time dimensional and a choir mm. direction never actually changes. So yeah. um, your, your, your choir direction is taken from your year of birth. So often the choir directions for ma male and female varies mm. from one year to the next. So I noticed that within the classroom, the year that all the boys were performing well and they were listening to the teacher, they were all actually facing a favourable direction. But ah. the girls were actually in an unfavourable direction because they were the opposite direction. And I don't know about around the rest of the world, but in Australia, I find mm. a lot of our schools, the classrooms go back to back. So from yes, they, they then do. change. So from one year, one year the boys are in a favourable direction, they actually change to the next classroom so they're then in the opposite direction and all of a sudden they don't have concentration and they play oh. up and we go oh that teacher doesn't know what she's doing so I actually put this to my the teacher for my my younger son and said can, can we actually try this can you and I told her all the directions of all the little girls in the room and I told her all the directions mm -hmm. of the boys in the room and she actually rearranged her classroom and oh, got to go teacher results. Yeah, she couldn't believe it. This teacher, well, this teacher was at the point she was tearing her hair out, um, and and so she and she was actually open to it. So it, it was um, it was really good to put put my view and my knowledge into action and to go, yeah. okay, I've actually made a difference in that classroom for for all twenty five children within that classroom, mm. and none of the mums would have even realised it, but it was it was actually feng shui doing its magic in a classroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michelle, you've also been working on um, an everyday subscription form of feng shui whereby feng shui and Chinese astrology enthusiasts can get a daily tip. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that's very exciting. I've just learned that. I know. That. Um, all of these things come from my clients as well. I, 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 yeah. I visit clients and I sit and I have a chat and I one client goes, oh, I wish you could do that and I wish you could do that. And I go, yeah, actually, I hadn't thought of it, but, yeah, I'm sure I can do that. So um, this daily subscription came this year from one of my clients. He said... Yeah. I wish your yearly and monthly information could come to me every morning. I would love mm. to wake up and, and have a message from you to tell me what type of day I'm going to have. And yeah. I, I thought about it and I thought, oh, of course, that like that that is so totally possible because not only from a yearly and a monthly point of view, so my monthly subscription goes very much over what is happening for the whole month within the home, the different sectors of the home, yes. which then relates to the country and obviously the overall map of the world. But we mm. also have the considerations of the 12 animals of how mm. they're actually affected and performing now yes. the energy with the animals changes every day and we have yes. an animal a change of animal every two hours so the the interplay of the Chinese astrology in animals is is very important to date selection and um, mm. right through China and those types of countries so many decisions aren't made unless it is a favorable date so mm. um, we have different date selections so today as a an example today is actually a day of destruction so 
um, a bag <laughs> that could mean oh, um, gosh, that's that <laughs> there, there, there could be major issues go down all around the world. <laughs> like, like, like there will be disru- destruction in in major pockets and major points mm. of the world um, to today, and we can fine tune that with where the animals are actually placed, and also where the flying stars and the energies yeah. actually intensified and placed and we also look into um how destruction is actually going to affect all of us now yeah. you can say day of destruction is actually really really quite negative but mm-hmm. the day of destruction can actually be extremely positive because mm-hmm. everything has a yin and yang impact so if mm-hmm. you look at the flip side of everything every time we get hurt we go oh that was awful we've been hurt but we can actually yes. look at it and go you know that was a really good lesson that was that was yes. a fabulous gift yes and yes. we can actually do the same with feng shui so date selection and understanding what is happening from a daily point of view is extremely important so a day of destruction is a fab- fabulous day to actually start a diet to to, to actually oh. change the way that you're thinking you're able to destroy ideas that you have you're able to to cut yes. talk thoughts that you may have yes. so a day of destruction even though from a the overall world point of view we think is going to be really quite negative destruction actually brings about major change so yes. you can actually tap into that energy which is just amazing but even though it's a day of destruction today is also a day of what we call the flying star four now the flying mm-hmm. star four relates to um flower of romance it relates to peach blossom luck and it also relates to oh. academic endeavors so even though it may be a day of destruction the energy of the day is of people and logic and intelligence and a- a- academic and also a, a a friendly feel towards people so we yes. we, we have that flower of romance so at the same time it's a day that is a really good day to go on a date um you may destroy the relationship you had yesterday by going on a date (laughs) with somebody new today but uh, but but it all works out in the end right um so 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 destruction can be very um favorable for some people but we then go okay well what is the most unfavorable pocket for today and Mm. the most unfavorable pocket for today in the area of conflict today is actually the east so it's really quite interesting to see how badly the weather plays out on on the east coast how um how angry and um satisfied things are actually in china um how putin's going to feel because he's also in the east like this this is all the conflict direction so energy comes into place we can also look at which animals it will be a good day for so today it's a good day for the ox and the snake so if you are an ox or a snake even though it may be a day of destruction it's not going to be unfavorable for you um Mm -hmm. so daily feng shui is 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 amazing i'm very excited about it because it means i can help so many people with their everyday actions and decisions simply cutting your hair if you cut your hair on an unfavorable day it may cause money loss um if you cut your hair (laughs) on a favorable day you 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 may have a money gain um or you'll you'll have a gain in reputation so Mm. um you need to sign a contract on a favorable day you need to travel um renovation breaking ground like date mm. selection is really huge is it a good day to get married like um yeah. so daily feng shui really just takes it to that next level the same as a horoscope reading i suppose yeah. um it's kind of giving people that up-to-date information which helps them to decide what actions they should take for the day and michelle people will be able to subscribe and get their daily dose of feng shui and chinese astrology in their inbox won't they they will yes at the moment i've actually set it up um i'm i'm, I'm looking at three avenues for this there, there will be an app that's coming soon and there will i also know be like a, a phone bot where people can call in and actually hear my voice tell, tell you today's reading but at, at the moment <laughs> the first step has actually been a, a subscription. subscription so they will actually receive i think i've said it for like one o'clock in the morning so mm. everybody wakes up to the subscription and mm. to the daily forecast in their inbox so it's simply mm. an email that they receive um, by joining and, and becoming a daily i'm subscriber. actually i have to say i'm actually a huge fan of subscription models that deliver something a little bit of um, guidance and help directly to your inbox every day so i've got uh, maybe four across completely different genres of subjects 
But in terms of getting that little bite-sized bit of information every day in my inbox, I find it incredibly helpful. Um, it, 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 there's not a lot to read. There's not a lot to take in. It's just a bite-sized bit of information and it just sets you up for the the, for the day and it, it remains in your mind actually for the whole of the day and where I would used to have just made uh, decisions willy-nilly now I'm like very conscious okay so perhaps this can wait till tomorrow perhaps I don't yes. need to respond to this email today or if it's a day of destruction yeah today's the day to deal with that email it's, so yeah, it's a day of destruction it's the day to um give up drinking to stop smoking yeah. to to yeah. go okay I'm, I'm going to change that habit so yeah um everything's not always negative like um yes. way has the ability to actually provide a lot of hope for people but um people still have to remember that they have to take action which is yes. why a daily forecast is um is so important invaluable and so helpful. um mm. and i'm also um for, for for this year for initially um you also receive a free tip as well with the um daily um forecast so i'm also including a tip with the daily forecast as well just so people Fantastic. once again they they, they 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 get that little bit extra that they weren't actually expecting um but but it, it just helps it helps them along and i think it's very important to have hope at the moment i think it's very important i was just to gonna say step up. um you mentioned just before about the east being um in an unfavorable phase so to speak um yes. and the realization that the whole east coast of australia is in a horrible mess related to the flooding rain um, I've never seen a system contain as much rain that has been dumped on an area from mid-Queensland right down to the bottom of Australia. And I'm talking monumental levels of, of water. So this is, you know, a thousand millimetres, 600 millimetres, 700 millimetres, etc., etc. And so briefly, when Michelle and I were prepping for the show today, um, we were talking about that, that water and the wind influence so michelle can you tell the audience about that conversation about the wind and the water and how that relates to what's happening in australia and then we might reflect a little bit on on china ukraine as well okay so um when we look at um feng shui and where the way that we're reading the energy and the elements generally we talk about flying stars and flying mm. stars is a isn't is just a, a name for an it's an energy point it's how how we actually explain the different um elements that are actually around and everything is based back on the five elements which is fire earth metal water and wood um, yeah. Now, feng shui actually means wind and water. So the yes. combination of feng shui relates to wind and water because mm -hmm. back in back in the day when feng shui was actually practiced, it was mm -hmm. all about the placement of the home. So you would place the house on the side of a mountain, halfway yes. down the mountain, so you actually had back support, and and then you would you would build out buildings on either side, or you would plant um, trees on either side so that you had support on either side, like an armchair as oh. such. And then you would have a large open space in front of you and you would possibly face a river. So the river back then was actually classed as the road. So mm. feng shui was all about drawing in the energy from the water because the water is our prosperity um, and the wind is actually our support. So mm. the, the wind embraces us and supports us. But if we look at the flying stars, um, each flying star relates to a different element. And the flying star three, um, which relates to anger, um, dissatisfaction conflict uh -huh. frustrations um mm -hmm. it also relates to also to action and movement so if i've got mm -hmm. a sports star or i've got somebody that's lazy that really needs to get moving well then i will want to activate a flying star three for that person because uh -huh. it brings dissatisfaction like destruction brings about action movement and change it makes us really look at things which means mm -hmm. we then change things so the flying star three this year um is bringing in a lot of action movement and change and the flying star three and also the flying star four. So the flying star four is also a, a number of academic endeavors. It's a number of romance. Um, it's a number of logic and, and, and people luck. But mm -hmm. both flying star three and four are both in the wood nature. 
So they're, they're both right. of the wood element uh, initially. And all the flying stars this year are in their original location. So they the three originally sits in the east and the four originally sits in the southeast. And ah. so as soon as we have really strong wood, we have wind because wood actually means wind, um, which is why we have major winds of change and we have major mm. growth and um, movement mm. and we have major dissatisfaction. Um, because the three and four sit in the southeast and the east, mm. that's why we've actually got a major I influx of inclement weather wow. from, from wind. Yeah, and it also makes sense that there's lots of social change happening um, at the moment as well. There's lots of conversations about equality. Um, there's lots of um, change around just so many things. So it's actually really fascinating how the feng shui and Chinese astrology sits with that as well. Um, I wanted to just briefly reflect on what's happening with China and what's happening with Russia because feng shui has a lot of um, say about what's happening in those areas as well. Can you explain that for us, Michelle? Yeah, so the, um, well, Australia actually sits in the, uh, if, if we flew flying mm. stars like a noughts and crosses chart, um, basically yeah. over a world map, then yeah. um, Australia sits in the southeast corner. And yeah. so that means um, the our southeast pocket and our southeast countries will actually look at things more for from a logical approach and a more mm. academic and a more intelligent approach and mm. also what is good for the people approach and, and we're actually seeing that this year very much so in, in Melbourne and in the eastern states like the southeast mm. pockets are actually looking at things quite differently to how they looked at things last year. Now yeah. the Ch China and the bottom half of Russia if we're looking at the same type of flying star grid sits in the east pocket so the uh -huh. east is all about anger conflict, dissatisfaction, movement and change. So wow. because Russia sits between the um, the Flying Star 3 and then the top half of Russia also sits in the northeast sector of, of, of the world and the northeast sector of the world this year has current prosperity. So it, it's quite interesting. So from Russia's yeah. point, they feel they're actually in a position of current prosperity. They feel that they're in a position of success and the Flying Star 3, the winds of change, is actually stirring up where they're wanting to go and what they're wanting to do. Now, in the middle of the world, we um, last year had a Flying Star 6. Now, the mm. Flying Star 6 is classed as a heaven number, but it also brings about um, power struggles, status, authority, um, and a pushback against power and authority. And mm. this is this year in the Northwest. So we saw even in Canada with all the mm. truckies standing yes. up. Yes. Um, so that is actually the pushback of authority. And we saw it happening last year in the middle of the world. So Europe actually sits in the middle section of, of, of yes. the world map. So this is why we had such a major pushback and stand in the middle of all countries and states and homes last year. <sighs> Yeah. So people were kind of getting all fired up to, to what they're entitled to. And yep. it, we did have that pushback against authority. Yes. Because the six this year sits in the Northwest, the Northwest sector actually relates to the patriarch, so the man of the house. It also uh, relates to male managers, male CEOs, oh, and all goodness. our politicians. So not only, and even in Australia, you can see mm. Sydney, ACT, that all sits in the east. So we have all this anger, conflict, dissatisfaction yes. and discord. And then we also have all our politicians and world leaders kind of grappling. Uh, male as well, predominantly male yeah, and male. Yes, so it's very much grappling. Control. And it's quite interesting because when we change time period in 2024, at the moment, it's actually the energy sits the strongest in the young male. So you will mm -hmm. find from a political point of view, um, young men are actually very favoured. Um, the younger politician generally wins the race at this mm -hmm. point of time. Um, mm -hmm. So young men are in a very strong position. But once we hit 2024, young men energy becomes past. It, it becomes past. It's no longer as powerful. And um, period oh. nine, which comes in at 2024, is actually yeah. the period of the young woman or the middle <gasps> age woman, which is really oh great. Oh my for God. Us because we're middle aged. <laughs> And um, <laughs> oh so, my so god, that's exciting! 
Yeah, so I, I really think in, over the next couple of years, by, by, by period nine, we will actually see a much stronger front of women in strong leadership roles all, all the way around mm. the world. That's incredibly exciting because um, there needs to be more women in conversations around yes. politics and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really positive news to hear that we're heading towards that way. Um, yes. And interesting, can Feng, if you look um, using Feng Shui and Chinese astrology, if you look to the future, can you predict? or give um, accuracy around what might happen in, in certain situations? Or does it give um, you a bit of an idea of what might yeah, happen? Yeah, def def definitely to a point. Um, you yeah. can actually predict and have a look at how this year is playing out. If you actually uh -huh. look back in history and mm -hmm. you, if you did a Google search and you go, what happened in 1962? Um, so what happened in 1962 will be very relevant to what happens this year with the energies were actually in the same position. So feng shui is all about energy, but it's, it's, it's not stagnant, it's time dimensional and it changes and moves all the time, but it does actually run on a formula. So we can forecast it very easily and predict what is going to happen from one month to the next and one year mm. to the next, simply mm. by looking back in history and also mm. by understanding how the flying stars as such, um, the energy and the Chinese animals will actually perform at any given time. Um, the only variable that we have these days is um, humankind, um, yes. Our, yes. Our, our control, our ego, um, and a lot yes. is actually to do with ego, of, of course, um, and, and, and that control and that fighter spirit that uh, as, mm. as humans we actually all have. So mm. this is where feng shui and Chinese astrology is so powerful because mm. if you have an understanding of what is happening within the environment and you have an understanding of what is happening actually within you um, and your capabilities, your character characteristics and your traits um you can then improve you you, you yes. can actually use what you've got to to, to, yes. to make the most of a situation fascinating stuff now we spoke earlier that you're working on um a new um app do you have any time frame for when the app's going to be ready um well, I do like to get things done quickly I when, know when you I do. can. So um, I'm hoping that. the yeah, I'm I'm hoping the app will actually be rolled out within within a month or two. So it, it will just depend how so we will um still be how, doing how locked shows, down with so. COVID I am this month. <laughs> If, if, if I'm locked down greatly at home um, and I'm not able to be on site consulting, um, the yeah. app will actually happen a lot quicker than if I'm if I'm out there helping people. Yeah. So um, it, it's Michelle, hard to say. Do you think that Western Australia is likely to lock down again, or uh, look? I predicted this time last year. I actually mm. said that um, Western Australia would be in a very unfavourable position and we would be hit And it with is at COVID. the moment. Yeah. Mm. I actually said COVID would hit us greatly in March and in April. We would, we would be yep. affected in a major way by March and April. Um, the rest of the world would get it and the rest of Australia would actually get it prior to that date, but we yes. wouldn't be really impacted. And I and I Until. don't believe we have any idea. I, I really don't think Western Australia is actually impacted as yet. Um, yeah. So I think the I next wondered. two is going to be extremely telling. Um, mm. The Western Australia, Perth actually sits in the southwest pocket and the southwest oh, pocket has the flying yes, star does. two this year. Two does represent sickness and illness. And um, so I, I, I do believe we will be, yeah, like people in can go, bit of that, 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 that's rubbish. Um, you can just look at the climate and go, well, yeah, you have to be affected. Um, but I did actually say 12 months ago mm. that it is that's now that we would actually be affected. Yeah. How badly we affect, are affected will really come down to the people and yes. come down to how, how much how, how much knowledge we have like mm. we're much luckier than the other states because we actually had so much time to gather information Correct. and to gather understanding of what works and what doesn't work so yeah. um we are in a very 
favourable position, we just haven't actually... To deal with an unfavourable outcome. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. That's right. That makes complete sense. Um, before we run out of time, I actually wanted to talk to you this week about the process of working with you um, using feng shui and Chinese astrology around building a home, um, an existing home, or doing a renovation and what that looks like working with you on, in those situations. Okay, so if you're lucky enough to be in Perth, you get to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. Um, I, and um, now that the border restrictions are over, I will um, be able to start travelling again, which means yeah. I will be able to consult um, in, All in over Asia and also in the Eastern States. So, I, mm. I, And I am planning on like being in Queensland. So if anyone's mm. in Queensland wanting consulting, I, I will actually be visiting in the next couple of months. Mm. Um, so when I take... When I take on clients, I always look at their, their home, the building. You actually need a certain amount of information from a client. So you yeah. need the address, um, a plan, and also the age that the building was built, um, plus all the birth details of all the occupants. Mm. I then do all my research and I do a report. Um, mm. And then I either come on site to present it or yeah. these days with Zoom, I, I, yes. I actually consult all, all the way around the world. Like I've just finished yes, a job in London. Say, I, yeah. I do them in South Africa. So um, these days I can actually do consultations via Zoom as well. So it's just a little bit, there's a little bit more of a time delay, obviously, because you have to receive your report and information from me. And mm. then once you've got that, we can then actually do face-to-face -face, um, consultation over Zoom. And you can actually send me pictures and images of your home so that I know what mm -hmm. I'm looking at. Because it's so mathematical and analytical, all my yep. information comes from the um, compass reading of your roof line. So it's the, actually the compass reading of the roof line of your home, plus um, cool. the age of the building and the occupant's details. So obviously there's a lot of symbolization on site that I pick out, but to get to the real guts of what is actually happening within any home, um, I can do it from a very analytical point of view, which means which I, can, I can consult anywhere around the world. And you're not guessing. You, you can only no. you read from actual data dimensions yes. you read from actual charts so it's yes. very yeah I, I, I'm always reading from plans so so mm. I've always got your plan so I already I always know which room the the energy is actually sitting in and mm. there's obviously with conversations and with with mobile phone technology is yeah. amazing right I, I didn't have any of this technology when I started I used to yeah. have to go to site stand in front of the home take a compass reading go home do the report then actually come back and see the, the the client a second time so these days um yes it's actually much easier which means i can get to a lot more people which and i was going to say fabulous. with with me so i'm on the eastern side of australia michelle's on the western side of australia and over facebook messenger we were able to have a whole conversation and and she said get out your phone uh get the compass up and tell me which stand this way tell me what you see uh, and it was amazing. So she could see, and then um, then with the address, she could work out where the house was, and it was really amazing. It was also lots and lots of fun. So I'm assuming that that um, whole process can go to anywhere in the world. Michelle can do the same yes. for you. If okay. people are thinking about um, a new build, have you been consulted on new build plans and go, oh, well, actually your bedroom would actually be better mirror image that end of the house and facing that way versus what you have have you done that sort of um Michelle? yes i actually i do a lot of work on new, new homes and new yeah. builds and um i do find a new build is the ultimate time to get your feng shui right because yes. if um if your build is correct when you initially build um that gives you a lot more longevity um mm. where if i'm coming in after you've built i'm kind of not really retro yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm having to try and correct and fix what you what you've already put in place and what you've already done. So it's um, a new builds 
really exciting and and it's actually yeah. really quite easy because it is quite analytical it is very much to do with having the correct room placement having the correct mm. directions for mm. it's matching you're actually feng shui is actually manipulating and matching the energy for the home and building with mm. the occupant um, yeah. so that it will last a long time period so you're you're looking for a new build you want longevity within that home for over a 20-year time period so it's um it's very interesting and no i i I do i do a lot of new builds and um, new builds are very easy um because the client doesn't necessarily even need to meet me um Mm -hmm. a new build can be done very analytically because i'm looking from the block of land so i'm looking from 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 the landed space i'm able to then with, with zoom google earth um, have a look at all the houses around you and also I'm working off a plan so it's very easy to get it right at that point for the occupants yeah and so Michelle if you're looking at like a bedroom which is just a square block on a plan you can then go now your bed should face this way or that way yes. and that then would inform the new homeowner about you know electricity placement and yes. pictures and that, that, that's correct and, because then yeah. you can look at where yeah where, where all your power points need to go um because your power points are of the fire nature because they're the yeah. fire element so you, you're looking at um, all the colours, which colours should be placed in each room. So that means you're getting your designing and your colour palette from an elemental point, correct yeah. and right, um, right down to whether it's rendered, which colour brick you use, what colour oh, roof really? you actually have, um, what colour window frames you have. And oh then from, goodness. so we always work from the centre of the home and work out. Mm. So you can then also look at your garden placement, the, the correct mm. placement for your water feature, um, where, where you would place the pool, where, where, where your entry point is the most strongest actually for you. So um, a new build is extremely powerful for the occupants if, if oh it is gosh. done correctly. So if it's done correctly, then they're going to have a house that is that feels good has good energy that they will sleep well be healthy in and be very prosperous all of those things if they use if feng shui correctly that will be the ultimate outcome and they will be happy there for decades that is the plan (laughs) Yes. <laughs> that, that, that is the plan that, 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 that is what you want for, for your client and, mm. and and I think with feng shui like anything if you don't get it right if, if you cause loss of um, money for, for your yeah. client or you yeah. cause poor health or you cause the breakdown of a relationship they don't yeah. tend to call you back in so yeah. um, you, how, how good you are it really comes down to how many clients you've got how, how mm. successful your outcome is over a period of time yeah now michelle before we run out of time what's the best way for people to connect with you and work with you um okay well social media is always really easy and good so if you're on facebook or you're on instagram um you can send me a message via whatsapp so facebook or you can contact me direct from my website um complete feng shui um or people can just email me direct just email michelle at complete feng shui um but remember michelle's got one l not two so um michelle at complete feng shui um just reach out to me direct um that's the easy and i take it from there and you enjoy answering people's um, uh, questions and I and do. and uh, because lots of people have questions about look how does this work is it really as good as people say and um, the website in particular has got a whole range of resources available and again you can connect with Michelle directly from the website so that's just complete feng shui and, and um, look I, I love questions on social media too yes. um, because I find a question on social media actually helps a lot of people because it may be a question that you've been thinking about but you haven't actually stepped up to ask so yes. if somebody else asks it and I answer it then there might be another 10 people that actually yeah. get, get that answer as well so I, no... I, I think social media is very very, very powerful and there's no and, and feng shui should, should be shared like yes. um my yes. ho- my whole point is how many people can i educate how many people can i, I um, share this knowledge with so that they can actually help their own lives so the more, the more you understand um the, the the more the better your life can actually be 
Fantastic. Michelle, thank you so much. Um, we're at the end of the show again, and I can't believe how quickly um, Complete Feng Shui goes when I'm chatting to you. There's just so much amazing information to get. So I encourage the audience today, connect with Michelle. Um, if you're listening to this post live, you will see the connection links to all of the things that we've spoken about the new uh, subscription 365 day tip the tips journal and beginners uh, feng shui as well all available all now um, and we will be back in the next fortnight with another amazing show with michelle michelle thank you so much for joining us wow. today on complete feng shui okay. i can't wait thank till you. the next show thank thanks, you. thanks thank everyone you for having me thank you uh, bye bye we love having you. Uh, that's your lot for this fortnight. We will be back with Michelle next fortnight for another dose of complete feng shui. Don't forget to jump on and connect with Michelle. Ask her the questions you want. Grab that new tip journal. It will be amazing. Grab the book and also think about subscribing to your daily bite-sized tip via email. And that, my friends, is your lot for this week. Bye for now.